for the rest of the two days. And to start, um, I would like to uh, invite uh, an eminent person, I would, I would actually call an expert in this space, uh, a close uh, affiliate of, uh, of Social Enterprise Lanka, uh, Dr. Amanda Kiesel. Uh, Amanda is from the United States, but has been living and working in Asia since 1999, uh, a very long time of that in Sri Lanka, I hope, um, I believe. Uh, she has professional experience in rural development institutional capacity building, sustainable agriculture, and social enterprise. Amanda has a master's in sustainable international development and a PhD in environmental studies. She is a co-founder of The Good Market, a, cura a curated platform for social enterprises and responsible businesses. Dr. Amanda. Um, very happy to be here today. So as Aranda mentioned, I've been in Sri Lanka for quite some time. I've been here for almost 15 years. And that means wherever I go, I always end up getting asked the same question. Right? I get asked, why Sri Lanka? Right? Over and over I get asked, why Sri Lanka? So if I'm outside of Sri Lanka, it's usually the second question. First question is, where is Sri Lanka? The second question, why Sri Lanka? If I'm here, if I'm in Sri Lanka, I'm going three-wheeler or something like that, the first question is usually, are you married? Right? And then the second question is, why Sri Lanka? Right? And I, I don't usually give a proper answer to that question. But I'm going to tell all of you today. I'm going to tell the reason why Sri Lanka today. And we're going to come back to that in just a minute. Um, but first I want to step back and look big picture, really big picture. Um, my background is actually complex adaptive systems, so I've looked at that from an ecological perspective, social systems, and economic systems. And when you look at the big picture, we have a challenge. Um, our current economic system, we're measuring success based on growth. Right? We're measuring success based on our material consumption. If you're talking about a company, you're looking at what their quarterly earnings are, what's the growth. If you're looking at a country, we're being measured according to our economic growth, our GDP growth. Our financial systems actually require growth to be able to continue the way that they're going right now. The problem is, we have one planet. Right? It's a closed material system. And you can't have infinite growth in a closed system. Right? It's not sustainable doesn't work. And that is actually the root cause of many of the problems we're all going to be discussing over the next couple days. Right? This is issues with climate change, with inequality, displacement, with conflict over resources. All of these things are, are linked to this. And because of that, if we want to continue as humans on this beautiful blue planet, we need to find a way to transition to a new kind of ecosystem, um, economic system. And when we say that, it can sound really overwhelming. That sounds big. How do we transition to a new economic system? And I find it really helpful to remember that our companies, oh, I think you can still read it, right? Our companies and our markets are social institutions. Right? That means we make the rules. Us as human beings, we make the rules for these things. And the rules change over time. Right? If you think about it, in the not-so-distant past, it would have been unthinkable to trade land, but we would buy and sell and trade human beings, right? Rules change over time. What we can trade, how we trade, who we trade with, all of these rules, they change. Even things we now kind of take for granted, we think this is the way it is, this is the only way it can be, this is how it has to be, those, those things are actually relatively recent. The idea of a corporation is a relatively recent idea. 
Right? Even 150 years ago, for a corporation, you had to get a charter from the government to show that you were doing a social benefit. The government could take that charter away, and that charter would expire after a certain number of years. And the company would have to reapply and show that they were benefiting the public. So even this concept of what is a corporation, how, how do markets work, all of this is constantly changing. So the good thing about that, and well, actually I wanted, to, I wanted to put this here as a reminder. Um, we talk a lot about free markets and free trade, right? but actually there's no such thing as free trade. Any kind of trade we're doing is based on rules. What we call a free trade agreement is really just more rules. So this is actually the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement printed out. It's more than 5,000 pages of rules. Right? So our, our markets are based on rules, and the rules reflect what our values are, what our priorities are. So if we write rules that prioritize giving profit to people who already have wealth, that is the world we are going to create. Right? So the nice thing about all that is it means if we humans create the rules, we have the opportunity to change the rules. We can develop rules that reflect what our values are what our priorities are, what we think is important. We can write rules that are good for people, good for planet. Okay. And the nice thing is that's already happening. This is not theory. This is something that we can already see in the world. And that's the topic that we're going to be talking about for the next two days. Right? So social enterprise and I'm, I'm apologies to the other organizers. I haven't put SMEs, I've put responsible businesses. Because I think it matters more, it's not so much about the size of the company, it's how they're behaving. Is what they're doing, right? So this is what we're going to be talking about over the next couple days. And I think before we get into that, I, I think it's probably helpful to talk about what do we mean by social enterprise. And we've talked about it here in Sri Lanka. We've found it really useful to think of it kind of as a hybrid, right? A hybrid in a way between a nonprofit and a for-profit. It helps people kind of get the idea of what we're talking about. So if you look in terms of purpose, what, what are they formed for? What do they do? Right? A nonprofit is formed, they're mission driven. They were created to address some kind of social or environmental prof, um, problem. And if you take it the extreme other end, right, a pure for profit company, they were created to maximize the profit for owners, return on investment for whoever owns the company. Um, if you're talking about a social enterprise, in this way, it's more like a nonprofit. It's also mission-driven. It was created to address the social or environmental problem. Now we have to come down to a really key point, sustainability. And this is particularly key in Sri Lanka right now, right? Because if you take a lot of our nonprofits in Sri Lanka, um, they're actually not very sustainable. They're dependent on grant aid. In a lot of cases right now, a lot of them are dependent on foreign grant aid, which is declining. And if you take a for-profit company, it, of course, is sustainable. That's the whole idea. It has income. It continues to go. It's sustainable. Okay? And in this way, a social enterprise is more like a for-profit company. Right? It's self-financing. It has some kind of built-in self-financing mechanism, some kind of model for sustainability. So I, I think this can be helpful, but it's really important to remember that these lines are fuzzy. There's not sharp lines between these things, right? It's, it's more of a spectrum between these things. So, you, for example, you have nonprofits that are, they do actually, even though they're dependent on some kind of grant, aid, or something like that, um, they're dependent, they have a whole network of members, and they collect small donations. We have a lot of these in Sri Lanka, right? They collect small donations from members, so they get their members to volunteer. So in a way, they're kind of in the middle of the spectrum. They're between those two, right? And in the same way, when you're talking about the businesses, right, we have some businesses, maybe they're not fully focused on solving poverty, but they want to make sure that we have natural laundry powder so we're not polluting our waterways. So they're, they're a responsible business. They're somewhere in the middle. They're, they're, between, they're between on the spectrum. So it's not these sharp lines. It's more of a spectrum. So... When we're talking about social enterprise, it's helpful to draw lines of where things are if you're doing a specific project or a specific program. So for example, we have people here that focus on impact investment. And if you're going to have a program for impact investment, you have to define this is what we mean by a social enterprise. 
you might draw the lines here, right? If you're going to be doing a government program and you're going to do benefits for social enterprises, you might want to draw the lines in a different place. Maybe then you're saying this is a social enterprise. You're, you're drawing the line somewhere else. Um, they mentioned good markets. We, we draw the lines really broad, right? We're trying to get as many people involved as we possibly can. So that's more of where our lines are. But I just want to suggest that for the next two days, rather than spending our time debating about where the lines are, because we hear that a lot, oh, that's not a social enterprise, right? Rather than debating exactly where the lines are, I think we can just basically agree it's roughly this green area in the middle, right? That's just for the next couple days, all of us here together, we're just going to roughly talk about this green area in the middle, not worry too much about where the lines are, right? Let it be just a little fuzzy. The reason for that is we've got a lot of bigger issues to talk about, right? The biggest thing is how do we go from these individual social enterprises, how do we go from that to a new economy? That's, that's a really big challenge. How do we do that? And I have a background in ecology, so for me, it's helpful to think about it a little bit like an ecosystem, right? If you're talking about an ecosystem, you don't just suddenly replace one with another. We can't flip a switch. Oh, our economy's not working. Flip a switch, switch to a new economy, right? Anybody who's involved in government knows that that would cause all sorts of crisis and disruption, right? Systems evolve. They emerge, right? Our new economy needs to grow out of our current economy. It's a process. It takes time. And if you're thinking about it kind of like a, an ecosystem, you can use some of the same kind of concepts, right? So when, for example, say you leave your, your paddy land and you start to get new plants starting to grow up, those first plants are what we call pioneer species, right? And we have, we have a lot of those in Sri Lanka, right? We have groups that have been doing social enterprise work, maybe not calling it that, but they've been doing social enterprise work for, for decades. And they felt a little alone and they felt a little crazy, right? But they were the pioneer species. They were the ones who were kind of starting up. And over time, these pioneer species, as they keep growing and as we have more diversity, we start to actually develop a community that ends up actually supporting each other. And we can really start to see that happening here in Sri Lanka now. Right? Once you get to a community, it's because if you're a social enterprise,